Sunday night I'd watch the practice with none of my friends I'd turn the dial to ABC to see the creep of the week that Bobby Donald defends But I'm out of practice With your host, Keith Marnie Mike and Deglio. Streamline. <laughs> Way back in high school, most every night, my mom watched QVC, so I missed the practice. There was no <laughs> TiVo, what could I do? Wait 15 years, get fat, then stream it on Hulu. You can't see me, right? literally have no idea what's been going on for the past two hours. <laughs> of practice. And welcome to the Out of Practice Podcast, a weekly podcast detailing David E. Kelly's award-winning series, The Practice. This week we are up to season four, episode 10, Day in Court. It is the 71st episode of Out of Practice. And guess what? If you're looking at this, you're looking at this. We are trying out something new this week. We are going to add a visual component to our podcast. So if you might be watching this on the YouTubes, and if you're not, it's on the YouTubes. How's it going, Mike? Uh, Pretty good. Uh, You know, it's funny. As of this recording, which will post tomorrow, hopefully on your podcast RSS feed and Instagram live through our Oopsie Instagram and also YouTube. The issue I'm realizing now is we don't have a YouTube channel. Oh, I think we do. I think I set one up. (laughs) Oh, right. We got a flag right away. (laughs) Well, we got flagged immediately. So (laughs) this is our way of avoiding the flag. So if you are watching this on the YouTubes, uh, the minute the episode proper starts, you if you want to find out what nonsense we talk about when the episode happens, you have to hop back to your uh to your podcast service but we'll be back for the oopsie awards as soon as it's done oh it's everything is happening nothing's happening it's all really interesting keith are you muted on the zoom uh i think so. oh oh on the zoom these are good we spent how, how long would you estimate we have just spent Way absolute for for the dividends it will pay absolutely way too long. <laughs> I believe I'm muted on the Zoom. Okay, I was just hearing a little popping and clicking. I don't know. That's just my computer slowly dying. Oh, or you know, it's, it's possible our intern Jen is not muted. Nah, on she's Zoom. Muted. I'd hear the birds. Oh, oh all right. Well, anyway, uh, yes, this is going to be a bit of a shit show. We are absolutely guarantee it will be. We are running 10,000 different uh, computers and programs. My desktop looks like an episode of Hoarders. But we are going to try and give you your normal mediocrity with some mediocre visuals this week. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. And so we looked at every legal way to just run the episode as is. Can't figure it out. Can't do it. Can't. Although there there has, in, in, in a twist of irony let's say keith because i can't come up with another vocabulary word Mm -hmm. i believe someone one of our listeners actually requested this week that we try to either release more content or do something live (laughs) and we happen to have been talking about this anyway so hopefully this is a stopgap until we can figure out a better way to get people in a live stream so we can have live chat. There's a lot of options and thoughts we have, but we've already spent too much time trying to get just this thing to work. So we've already spent vastly too much time, but we're both sort of uh, tech nerds who love problem solving. So this has been quite the afternoon. Uh, speaking of afternoon, it's this has been such a, a dark and stressful era that we're living through uh, here in this country. And we've talked about it a lot in the episode. But something good happened today, and I think we should acknowledge it, and that is, of course, that the uh, Supreme Court 
ruled uh, that you can not or, or that that LGBTQIA people are included in the workers' protection rights um, here in America. So you cannot be fired for being gay, which I thought was a really, uh, honestly, it made me check my privilege. Yes. Because I had no, uh, it, it blew my mind that that was even possible. Like yes. to be, th that an employer up until this point was allowed to fire somebody if they found out they were gay or trans or something. And I was like, what? How was that possible? But I, that's my privilege because I don't have to think about it. What also blew my mind to coin your, to steal your phrase and also gave me a glimmer of an emotion I haven't felt in so long, which I believe is hope. Mm, I'm not ooh, sure. What's that quite, feel like? Yeah, it's weird, and, but it's, it's nice. It's warm, but like a good warm. Mm. Anyway, is that they voted, uh, there were only three dissents. Yes, that's right. Yes, yeah, so both... Uh, John Roberts and Neil Gorsuch on the conservative side voted in favor of it. And I'm I'm not as surprised by Roberts because it's very clear that he does not want to see the world burn, even though mm -hmm. he's coming from a conservative end. Uh, but this is, I think, the second or third ruling we've had from Gorsuch that is similarly uh, wanting to keep the world together. So, hope! Yeah. Hope. And to counteract that hope, Keith, here in Astoria, Queens... <laughs> Quarantine God. is very, very over. It's become boring. It's become boring, and I have lived here for a long time now, and it is absolutely, between the hundreds of people just flooding the streets to hang out with drinks they got at some bar, we have this lady, who you've seen by now because it went viral, who went to one of our local bagel shops and didn't wear a mask, and uh, another patron called her on it, and so she went and coughed on this lady's face and food, and then turned around to notice she was being filmed, and so she covered her face and runs out, but that shit went viral overnight. Yeah, you, so could, we, you could see the moment in her eyes where she realized her life had just been ruined. It was So, insane. yeah, cancel culture, outrage culture, it's all, look, people have the receipts now. We're in a new era. I don't know what's right, what's wrong, what's top, what's bottom, but we're all finding our way through together, and we are going to at least remember that the bigger picture is that there is civil outrage and demonstration taking place to just get us all on the same playing field. It's going to yeah. be a slow, slow march, but we are going to continue to amplify those messages and those voices just be a decent goddamn human being is really all we're pushing for here. Yeah, yeah. Try, try to be decent. Anyway, uh, it is time to hop in to the episode, starting with... Filings and subpoenas. Filings and subpoenas. Filings and subpoenas. Filings and subpoenas. So this is where uh, our audiences who are watching the video of this realize that, yes, we do dance to all the bumpers every single week. Uh -huh. uh, we definitely dance to ourselves because we're just those type of people. Uh, so we've heard from a couple of our old friends, and one of them I'm going to sprinkle in throughout the episode. We're going to have internal Ooh. filings and subpoenas, which is super exciting. Uh, but we heard from Jorge Novoa, who said, Hi guys, I must say, not since my earlier years of My Favorite Murder have I listened to a podcast immediately upon release the way I do yours, and I've seen them live several times. Which is to say, if after the quarantine you end up having a live NYC screening of an episode or two, I would totally be up for that. Not that I'm nominating the post-Super Bowl two-parter per se, but... Season 4, episode 12, was the most viewed episode of the whole series. 23.8 million people nerd facts. Yeah, that's coming up. The post-Super Bowl double feature. Very exciting. Coming up very, very soon. He said, also, would you ever consider doing a bonus episode, i.e. Patreon? I, for one, would love to hear you guys cover a court documentary, perhaps. Just putting it out there. I would join in a heartbeat. I, it's possible. I mean, I, I, so many things about that 
are spinning my on my brain stem. First of all, <laughs> the f- we never thought. In fact, we were joking weeks ago even that nobody even listens to the end of the each episode, That's let alone true. listens weeks ahead to prepare for the episode. I know we have people listening. I, I don't even do that. <laughs> no, That's you the, don't. That's what we base the entire episode on, is the principle that I'm coming in completely unprepared and Keith is probably overprepared. So anyway, that blows my mind. Also, it's hard for me to say this because you and I are two of the most self-deprecating people who have ever been born. People like to hear us talk, Keith, which is, I guess, good because we do a podcast together. So... Uh, This whole thing is sort of predicated on that, so... (laughs) yeah. So, I should mention also, there are motorcycles everywhere, jackhammering taking place, and my neighbor upstairs is bumping some tunes. So, if if somehow you can hear my voice, it's a miracle. I hear you so, fine. yeah, we're, we're weighing it. We're going to, we've had other talks about other podcasts. We're going to figure it out. We're figuring out how to, how to expand, how to give you more us, Jorge. I don't, I can't believe you're asking for it, but we are actually talking about it. So, Stay tuned. Uh, you know, that's because Jorge is a new friend. My old <laughs> friends. <laughs> Can I donate to a Patreon to have just a little bit less of you? Yeah. That well, would be great. Well, So, yes, can, thank you. We're working on it. Yeah, we're thinking about it. It's very ex- it's very exciting um, and very gratifying and very humbling that people are listening and, and, uh, and participating with such enthusiasm. Um, all right. So, Jorge continues. And now... The Unsteady Perceptions of an Oop Fan. On Season 4, Episode 6, Marooned, Mike brought up an excellent point, which made me think he was about to ask a legal question and got sidetracked. I found this perceived question so fascinating, I decided to research it. Except, when I listened to the segment again, I realized I was wrong. i just written a mini-dissertation about a point that (laughs) wasn't even raised. That said, a similar situation so it's not a spoiler, uh, will come up again this episode, A Day in the Court. Uh, A Day in Court, which happens to be one of my personal favorites on the series. Look out for that, Mike. So I thought I'd share what I found. And so to give context to this, this was the question that you asked. Miss Carlson. I'm sure I know the answer to this, but... We've brought this question up before, and I'm just going to pitch it to our audience. Or Jen. But it seems pretty (laughs) self-explanatory. So we both agree, Keith, that during a trial, when something is objected to and then stricken from the record, it doesn't really achieve anything because the jury, regardless of how hard they try, it's now in their brain. Right. Oh, you continue. However, in future future, uh, appeal should the trial ever come to appeal, when the record is read back or if Mm -hmm. if testimony is ever then uh, referenced for future trials or appeal or or what have you, it is literally stricken from the record. It's never reheard. Yeah. Okay. So we have some answers. Unbelievable. Jorge has become the better podcast. So he says, as it turns out, what Mike said about objections remaining in the jury's brain actually has an unofficial legal phrase. Unring the bell. That is, by not having a mistrial, the judge is asking jurors to unring a bell. So when he brought this up, specifically in regards to appeal, it had my wheels t- uh, spinning. Enter new segment. What do fans think Mike's going to ask? What if the jury can't unring the bell? What if they disregard the judge's instructions and find the defendant guilty? How can this injustice be raised in appeals court if it was, in fact, literally stricken from the record? That's totally what I meant. It's totally what I meant to ask. See? While I give Mike bonus points for the correct usage of literally, (laughs) listen to Scott, we'll correct you on that immediately, my little brother. What I found out was it's actually not literally stricken from the record. Not placing blame, I thought the same thing. Apparently, if something is stricken, it's not available to the jury, like Keith said. However, according to the Guide of Judiciary Policy, the transcript must contain all the words and other verbal expressions uttered during the course of the proceeding. No portion must be omitted from the record by an order to strike. 
the material ordered stricken as well as the order to strike must all appear in the transcript. So I, I think what that means is that it is stricken from what the jury can ask for. It is the, like the jury's transcript. If they can ask for a piece of it read back to them, the jury cannot have access to that. But of course, the actual transcript of the trial itself, uh, for, for use in appeals, it must remain there, which makes perfect sense. Uh, okay, yeah, that does make sense. And it it's good to know. Yeah, that's really, I think that's fascinating. Uh, it's amazing work. Thank you, Jorge. That was, uh, you made us the better podcast. Uh, fantastic. I, it makes me so happy when things we hoped would happen start to happen. Uh, you know, and this is the first time ever in our life. Yes, people are not only writing in, interacting with us, but they're a making me sound smarter than I am, <laughs> and b answering questions, which leads me to. My next question, which could lead to my ultimate divorce, do we oh, need an no. intern? Do we need an intern whoa, if our listeners whoa. are interning for us? Of course we need an intern. Okay. First up, she makes us better because like, when she's on the line, you know, we have to sort of up our game. Second mm -hmm. of all, she does research in the moment as opposed true. to a week later. So okay. I think you're necessary, Jen. Although I don't think, I think you're more than an intern. Oh. We, need to, we need to give her an official title that's not intern. In the, I mean, she is unpaid. There mm -hmm. is that. But, uh, yes, definition of intern. All right. So the next filing and subpoena is from our good friend Phoenix Cage. And so I'm going to, he gave us, <laughs> he sent notes on the upcoming episode, the episode we're about to do. Uh, a day in court. Uh, so he has some thoughts as, as we're going through that I'll inject as we talk. But he begins... Uh, a mild spoiler for today, but I think we can handle it. We're all adults here. He says, Keith, this probably won't spoil anything except maybe what does Mike think's gonna happen segment, but I figured I'd let you make the call. I say I'm putting it in. I wanted to drop this in ahead of time and bring up during the episode because it's probably not worth discussing after the fact, but the writers really do not know what money laundering is. David E. Kelly is an attorney, so he must have been so he must not have been a criminal attorney, either in the literal sense or in the Saul Goodman sense. It's not handing someone money to them and handing it back. It's creating a legitimate source of income with inflated profits so that large sums of illegitimate money can be spent without raising red flags. So it's a serious concern for those with illegal gains. After all, tax evasion is how they got Capone. I'd figured at least one of you guys would catch this. For all I know, you could be laundering tens of dollars through Anchor.fm ads. <laughs> Oh, oh, that is a great zing. It's a good oh, thing we're he, friends, Phoenix. He knows because... us so well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Phoenix gets it. Uh, he sa Also, he continued, I would have sent my usual voice message, but I just had sinus surgery at the hospital, and I can't speak very well, either from the anesthesia, painkillers, or the gauze in my nose, just all of the above. Well, I'm sorry you had sinus surgery. That sucks. Yeah, get better soon, man. Uh, get better soon. Uh, we look forward to... Uh, Hearing more from you later in the episode. But now... Do you know what is the best uh, recovery medicine? NyQuil. Oh, yeah. Well, okay, second best is listening <laughs> to a three-hour podcast whilst watching the two morons speak about it on Instagram and YouTube, and then them not legally being able to play the episode audio on YouTube and having to switch over to your phone to listen to the episode <laughs> only to have to switch back to Instagram Live or YouTube to watch the closing. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, it's like, <laughs> I think you've made it harder because this is sort of Mike's idea. You have now made it harder for us and our listeners. Mm -hmm. That's <laughs> really, that's really true. And you get to... Uh, Watch me uh, chain drink Coke Zero the entire Who is episode. Who's not a sponsor? Not a sponsor. Not a sponsor. But if you would like to sponsor us, 
Oh yeah, Absolutely. I'm sure Coke, Coke is like, you know what we were really missing out on in our marketing strategy? The niche people who watch the practice from 1999 and listen to podcasts about it market. Yeah, oh, oh, definitely. No, I'm sure that they'd uh, see a giant spike in sales. All right. Well, we're going to hop back in the time machine back to December 12th, 1999, heading into the Christmas season. And I would like to ask you what was going on this day in the basement. Keith, so many chapters were about to close in my life. I'm about to leave for the Christmas break, the hol- the winter break from Ithaca, never to return. Oh. And I'm going to drive home from Ithaca to back to King of Prussia, Pennsylvania, in my favorite car I've ever owned, in what will be the last long-distance journey that car ever takes, because in a mere matter of weeks, I'll get into an accident. My mom will decide that she's going to have the car fixed, and it never comes back from the shop because she decides to sell it to some cousin I have who runs the shop who says that he can, he'll give her more money for it than it would cost to fix it, even though I've learned that's all bullshit. So we say goodbye to my favorite Honda Prelude 1999, cherry (laughs) red, two-door, sporty as hell, we salute you. I thank you for your service. And uh, I miss you, man. I miss you, buddy. Oh, that That's is, it, Keith. That's so sad. That's all I have to say. Okay. Well, I, on the other hand, have a great story. I oh, I can't so wait ex- to hear it. I'm so excited about this day in the basement because I actually know exactly what I was doing on this day. Ooh, Okay. And it is also, speaking of spoilers, we have a lot of spoilers this week. This is a sports ball spoiler because I, on this day, attended the first NFL football game of my life (laughs) at Ralph Wilson Stadium in Buffalo. I went to go see Kerry Collins, Tiki Barber, Amani Toomer, Michael Strahan, and the New York football Giants defeat the Buffalo Bills. And I went and uh, we sat in the very front row at Ralph Wilson Stadium. And I think you have a picture of, yep, there is, I went with my girlfriend at the time who was remaining anonymous, not because she asked for it, but because she probably would (laughs) ask for it. (laughs) The poor thing does not deserve to be uh, associated with me or this podcast but there is us in the front row and i think i sent another picture of the view that we had we are on about it looks like the nine yard line and it was spectacularly fun um the we, saturation of that photo looks just like the saturation of our uh, episodes we watch i think it i think it's just the 90s yeah that was on a uh disposable like you know film camera i took the pictures are terrible and completely uh impossible to see what's happening but not only did we win we won on a last minute field goal to take the lead and then a hail mary from doug flutie that was intercepted right in front of me in the seats there so on all of the team highlight videos, I can actually see myself jumping up in my white Phil Sims jersey when the uh, ball is intercepted. Listeners who are watching with us today, take a look at that side by side. Keith, I gotta say, man, I you have not aged a bit. No, well, it's, I, I think it's because fat don't crack. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Low Cal Keith at the Giants game. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that's high Cal Keith at the Giants game. And then I spent like 15 years like super thin. And, and then I, I became high Cal Keith again, which is why now I'm low Cal Keith trying not to be high Cal Keith. I love that you blurred out your ex-girlfriend's face, but that poor but not man, my jowls. Th- that, that poor bastard right behind you on the top right of that photo. He's clearly not happy with the way the games... By the way, this week's episode of the Out of Practice Podcast brought to you by Unnecessary Turtlenecks. Unnecessary Turtlenecks. I Cover those a- rolls when you go to the polls. 
<laughs> I found uh, turtlenecks necessary for about uh, from about 15 to 25. Just mock turtlenecks every day. That was my uniform because I apparently just did not ever want to touch a girl. Oh, yeah, anyway, okay. so my other favorite story, speaking of the guy next to me in the uh, at the at the Bills stadium, because, of course, we're the we the, the away team and they were all rooting for the Bills. There was this guy sitting right next to me who it was a one o'clock game. He was toasted well before kickoff. And he spent the entire time screaming to the point like I was worried about his vocal health. <laughs> and he was just going, Coleman, Coleman, you suck. Coleman, you suck. Your mother hates you. You suck, <laughs> Coleman. You fucking suck. <laughs> and so I let him do this. And just like endlessly. It never, never stopped. I let him go all the way to the fourth quarter. And I just went, uh, y- you know, it's Collins, right? And he's like, <laughs> it's like, oh, thanks. Collins, Collins, you suck. <laughs> just like didn't skip a beat. Oh, man, that's funny. It was great. All right. So that is this day in the basement. It is time to talk about... It's time for the Out of Practice Podcasts This Day in the World. The greatest hits, the biggest movies, headlines from Vermont, essential sports updates, and for some inexplicable reason, the weather from 20 years ago. Now back to Keith and Mike. And the number one hit continued to be... No. But this week I've gone with a metal cover... By Leo Maracchioli. The <laughs> cover of the Burlington Free Press. No, no, stop. Say it again. What's the guy's name? Leo Maracchioli. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I, I took Italian diction. All right. So, <laughs> Burlington Free Press. The headline was Attorney General to look into hazing. And what was happening there was quite the scandal. The University of Vermont men's hockey team got into a horrible hazing scandal that decimated the team for a while. I remember that. That must have made national news. I'm sure it did. It was pretty brutal. And uh, especially looking back on it was even more upsetting than uh, I thought, which is this is a great underscoring for this very serious conversation. The top movie was Toy Story 2 in its third week of its reign. Thank you, Leo. That was amazing. I'm glad to have found that. And now it's time for the slightly spoiled... It's time. It's time. It's time, it's time for sports. sports. After the glory that was the Giants' last second victory over the Bills, the world turn- turned in to watch the Philadelphia football Eagles lose to the Dallas Cowboys 20-10. to Troy Aikman threw for 242 yards, including receptions by Neon Deion Sanders. The Eagles fell to the ignominious record of 3-11. Man, we sucked. <laughs> you were not good at all. Well, speaking of not good at all. Weather. Oh, yeah. Talk to me. Can you tell me the weather? Because we all need to know. Was it hot or did it snow? Yeah, maybe. Tell me the weather. From 21 years ago. Oh, yeah, just feel it. Mm. Keith, it was finally winter time here in Astoria, New York. It's been balmy the past few weeks, even though it shouldn't have been. It was 46 degrees and cloudy. Okay. Got all the way down to 40 degrees. And I can guarantee you this it wasn't as noisy then as it is now. And that's your yeah, weather. You- Okay, well, I'm so glad we 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 did that. Well, with human being, God damn it! My life has value, and I'm not going to take this anymore. It's time to talk about the damn episode. This episode is season four, episode ten, entitled "Day in Court." It was written by David E. Kelly with a story by Mark Silver whose only other credit is one episode of Rude Awakening. 
Huh. It was directed by Dennis Smith, who last directed Losers Keepers. Which leaves us with the eternal question. What is that supposed to mean? What's your problem? Is this what happens to women when you insert your penis? What? What does Mike think's gonna happen? You know, what if he would have drank the curdled milk? Then what would have happened? You know, I think it was last week, Keith. My wife was like, I know I just find myself waking up and humming your jingles. And so do you know what she and I did, which is the maybe pinnacle of self-absorption and losership? I can't wait. We queued up each and every one of our jingles, Keith, and we sat in my living room. We played them but one by one and jammed out to them. We did that, which oh really solidified that we should stay married for a multitude of reasons, one of them being no one will ever love us that much. No one will that, ever do that with us again, with me again. That is extraordinary. And I'm Find so, somebody who sings your podcast jingles with you. I, yeah. You no. marry that person. Yeah, right? I'm just, I, I'm not upset by the uh, non-veiled narcissism of it. I'm just pissed off I wasn't there to do it. <laughs> well, next time we'll, we'll Skype you in. Yeah, but there I'll, you go. But I'll make sure we load up 17 different programs and it takes us uh, three and a half hours to set up the Skype before we do it. <laughs> oh my God. I'm like, I'm exhausted. We haven't even started the episode. Well, there was clearly a creative decision that they were not going to do previously on this season because they've been leaving me out to dry. And you've noticed that my predictions thus far have gone downhill. I've been predicting pirates. Pirates, yeah. Uh, I really don't need to say anything else. I think that was really the, the all-time low. This week, I'm... Oh, well, last week, Bay of Pigs was tough, too. They left me nothing. They left me That's nothing. That's true. They gave us this nothing. Week, they gave us nothing. This week is tricky, too, because... Uh, Oh, wait, I do have Marooned queued up. I have the wrong episode queued up. Got the wrong, why are you obsessed with that episode? I don't know. It was a good episode. It was a good episode, but it wasn't Day the, uh... in court. I mean, every episode is a day in court. Every one of them. Right. Lawyers so I'm in talking here. should be the title of it. Here's the thing. So I'm going out on a limb here. Not so much of a limb. I need more oh body. Oh, my God, your cat. <laughs> Look at Chad's video. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> So, in, so Jen is is uh, a part of our our video Skype thing, and her camera's just on the floor. And uh, it was it was Cece, your cat, just uh, joined the podcast. Well, yeah. How's the segment going for you? Yeah, not great. Uh, <laughs> we well, we did say up front this one was going to be exceptionally bad. I'm trying to uh, so many things. Anyway, I need more Bobby. The season's been great, but I need more Bobby. Uh, I need less comic Bobby with the wedding dress stuff, and I need more Bobby being Bobby McRambo and Bobby McAwesome Lawyer. Mm -hmm. Mike is thirsty. Give me that sweet, sweet Bobby. He's thirsty. And so that's what I'm predicting this episode, that I'm going to get what I need. I'm going to get a <laughs> hefty dose of that Bobby McDick. <laughs> I was ready. I was ready. And not only that, but I'm going to say that day in court is not referencing a client. It's referencing one of our own. One of our own from the firm gets in trouble, Keith, and Bobby McRambo has to represent them in court. Ooh. That's what I think. Okay. So, Keith, how could people watching us on the internets here... Uh, listen to the episode with us for those oh. who are just finding us and have not don't know how this all works oh like that's us. true well first off there will be a link below like and subscribe <laughs> i'm on youtube uh but yeah you can hop on to any of your podcasting services apple podcasts or anything else you enjoy or stitcher or, uh, or whatever and uh listen to the episode you go go back to our archive all the way back to the pilot episode and if you would like to talk to us about these episodes, you can email us at outofpracticepodcast at gmail.com. You can find us on social media on Facebook and Instagram at 
Out of Practice Podcast. We have a blog, which is also linked below. That's outofpracticepodcast.blogspot.com. You can see all of the screenshots we're not allowed to show you on the YouTube. All right, so there you have it. You can listen to the episode along with us, or you can watch it at home on Hulu, uh, which we hope you subscribe to. Not a sponsor, but they will be shortly. I feel it. I feel it. We mention them so they don't sue us. That's true. But we will be back here. Uh, You can go listen to the episode. We'll be back here for the Oopsie Awards, which is big news. The most prestigious award I've made up. And uh, But if you want to hear us talk over the episode to really get the gist of what Keith and I do, I mean, our really insightful... Really interrupting the episode, breaking the flow, confusing the plot lines... Yeah. But that aside, it's where some of the most choice bumpers get played. So you don't uh, want to miss those. That's true. Either way, we're going to roll an ad you don't have to listen to, and we'll be back for the oopsies, which will be instantaneous for you. So oh pause here, listen to the episode, come on back for the oopsies, do it however you want. We don't even know if this is, was a good idea, but we're going to be back. Ladies and gentlemen. The Out of Practice Podcast, in unofficial, unsolicited, unfactual association with David E. Kelly Productions, proudly present... Oopsie! Oopsie. The Oopsies! Celebrating excellence in acting good, lawyering good, guesting good, and being Tom Brady. Not to mention, this is where we rate the episode and stuff. Now... Here are your hosts, Keith and Mike. What the hell are the oopsies? Well, they're a fake awards show (laughs) that we do at the end of every episode. If you are just joining us, get ready, because our first category is... So all of the chickens have come home to roost now, Keith, because our results-oriented process have left us in a pickle. Yes. Generally, you'd say if in the course of the trial, you got choked out by the defendant, (laughs) you probably are going to win. And thus, for being the winner and also very brave, you get the oopsie. But that didn't happen here. No. Well... (sighs) Helen lost consciousness, but I think also lost the oopsie. You think? Well, she also lost her shit after the. She did, but but that doesn't matter because it the it is after the jury is out, so she can do whatever she wants. Now Bobby lost his shit too, and he was pretty gross in in cross examining Ed Bagley Jr. Right, but he did win. He did win. Eugene didn't say much. He rolled his eyes a couple times. He harumphed around. and He, he did break his own client's arm. He did that as well. So, so what that. I'm saying is we've got a lot of bad choices. Well, uh, I, I... I don't see how Bobby doesn't win, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he laundered some money. He... Yeah. Ended up in jail. I mean, if, if you look at it this way, he took a client who had stabbed an unarmed person seven times. Seven times. Through the jugular and through the heart. <laughs> and somehow this person was innocent. And But what he did is that he, he literally just hammered reasonable doubt and... Uh, Pointed out some holes that Helen left in the case. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, okay, all right. You have talked me into it. Congratulations, Bobby Donald, with your MVL. And uh, this just in from uh, from our intern, the most appropriate thing possible. She started drinking. <laughs> well, it was not five o'clock somewhere when we began this, but it is now. It sure as hell is now. It was basically oh. breakfast when we began the day. Oh, my Lord. So we're streamlining, right? Streamlining. Streamlining. I still have to mix it and get it on the internet by <laughs> soon. All right. Our next category is... 
already, already famous, famous Cause you've been on TV Getting, getting the pay Watch your first entry on your IMDB Way to go But you're the best guest actor You are the best guest actor You are the best guest actor on the episode Did you see my air piano there, Keith? I did, no, I, I did mine too, I always do mine I'm slightly out of focus, here we go so, it's the piano behind me, but whatever. do we go with bad accent or do we go with Ed Necrofagley Jr.? Uh, in my opinion, neither. I wow. Think, I think this goes to Paul Dooley as Judge Swanko. Oh, absolutely. You know what? I just th- I'm thinking of him as Roberta Kittleson as not guests because they're just so ever yeah. present. I, think I thought you're right. Paul Dooley crushed it. I thought it was uh, it was fascinating. There were a lot of different colors that he gave us, and uh, I I like that character, who is you know similar to to Richard Bay. He's a villain with colors, mm-hmm. and and I find that uh, a really compelling character. And I'm always glad to see him when he's there. So congratulations to Paul Dooley for your Dooley earned. Oopsie. Next up. You killed your podiatrist or blew the case, but you let a single tear run down your face. You're the best actor on the show. I called it at the top. I said, give me more Bobby. I said, I need, I need me my medicine. Give me my baby Bobby. Give me my Bobby McDee. I need that big old Bobby McD. Uh, and boy, did I get him. I got a very big dick. Oh, I got it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I needed my Bobby McD. I got mm-hmm. my Bobby McD. And I yep. got him firing on every cylinder. Not one, not two, not three, all the way up. Not even 10. I got me some 11, 12s, 13s, and up to 15. I got every bit of Bobby I needed. And then some, if you know what I'm saying. And so for me, and then a crazy clothes, too. His clothes was really excellent also. Not just the memorizing, memorizing, <laughs> memorizing of the lines. <laughs> Get this man a sandwich. Yeah, he is. I say Dylan McDermott, baby. Is he on Cameo? Keith, have you heard of Cameo? I have heard of Cameo, yes. Will someone, will we use all of the proceeds from the Out of Practice podcast to get Bobby McD to give us a Cameo? Well, I, here's the thing about that, though. I, <laughs> There, there was a uh, someone did that for our progenitor Star Trek: The Next Conversation. They actually hired John Delancey to do a little cameo as Q. The problem was it was a little awkward because uh, he was talking to them as if they were like nobody's, like you know, like a cute. Oh, I'm gonna, I'll mention your podcast or whatever. But they were like. In real life, they're friends. They actually know John Delancey, but oh. John didn't know who he was doing it for. So it came off a little bit like weird. And it was it was a little awkward. Hmm. So that's a that's a no then? I I think that might be awkward. Like if we if if someday we come across and can do it as as I don't know, if it, it feels a little like a, like prostitution. You know, just like hiring them to pay attention to us. Would you be surprised to know I've already looked into it? <laughs> Not in the slightest. To my searching, interestingly, for those who've been listening with us, the only oh my god, on, I, I just ruined my own birthday present. The only person on there is Marla Sokolov. Interesting. Who we've already contacted. Really, we, we're so. already good friends with Marla. So good, good old friends. Um. Jen, Jen is very anti cameo. She thinks it's uh, everything that's wrong with everything. She's not wrong. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Uh, anyway, anyway, uh, yeah, I agree with you. Uh, I'll give it to Dylan. I, I thought uh, Laura Flynn did really excellent work in this episode, and you know, I always love cracking Eugene. Uh, but yeah, congratulations to Dylan McDermott. The Tom Brady Award for being Tom Brady. Oh, wait, I forgot there wasn't a it's time for on this one. So 
It's time for the Tom Brady Award for being Tom Brady. Those of you just joining us, we just don't have the time to explain to you why we do this award. Just know that every week we award Tom Brady an award for being Tom Brady. Yeah, that's what he got the oopsie for. And though it might seem like we are singing his praises, we're not. It's it's tongue-in-cheek and... No, no, I'm a Giants fan, he's an Eagles fan, and nobody likes Tom Brady. Uh, by Although the way, he is an avid listener and has emailed us many times. Many times. A pat on the back, Keith, for SpaceX Tom Brady. Really funny. Oh, doesn't yeah. take the t- doesn't take the cake. I still think Bobby uh, Tom Brady wearing Bobby's dead mom's wedding, wedding dress, dress, jumping out Tom, of a cake for my for birthday. Keith's birthday. Tom Brady is still the best. But, That's a pretty good one. Uh, as affirmed by. Uh, Founding sponsor, Leanne writes on Instagram, by the way. Oh, oh, great. Anyway, I think that this week, Tom is jumping on the bandwagon as usual. He saw we were doing it and trying something new. And so this week's award for the Tom Brady Award for being Tom Brady goes to YouTuber Tom Brady. Oh, interesting. Uh, we, I think we have previously... We did podcast Tom Brady. We did podcast Tom Brady. We also did YouTube exercise workout Tom Brady. Right, right. This is YouTuber, work- though. This YouTuber. All right. So like, mm-hmm. like and subscribe Tom Brady. Yes. Like and subscribe Tom Brady. That's perfect. Okay. There it is. Well, congratulations to like and subscribe Tom Brady for winning the Tom Brady Award for being Tom Brady. Which brings us to... The monumental moment of every episode. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to announce how many spare tires this episode gets. Now, on the first season of the Out of Practice show, uh, there was inexplicably, inexplicably a... Get this man a sandwich. A spare tire in Bobby's office. Also, it wasn't the Out of Practice show. It was just (laughs) the practice. We have no spare tires. We have no show. Uh, what is happening? <laughs> <laughs> so basically, instead of warning, awarding stars, we wait, award you know, spare... I, I, you know what? Wait, hold on. <laughs> you have now stumbled on too many words. And you know what... Oh, we haven't done it in so long. What, which, what doesn't stumble on all their words is... It's not just a day. It happens every week. I don't know my facts and I cannot speak because it's not a better podcast. Thank you. Thank you very much. <sighs> um, yeah, so we award spare tires instead of stars. It's just how we rate the episode. Get over it. So <laughs> I'll say, you know I love me Bobby, some Bobby McRambo. I love yeah. when we go to 11. So I must love when we go to 10, 12, 13, 14, 15. And I did. So much of this I loved. I loved a lot of the performances and the acting, and I even liked some of the questions. There's some stuff out of left field. They Just to get crazy, we're talking necrophilia. We got Ed Bagley Jr. who's pissed. Everybody's pissed. They're choking out Helen. It's It was a lot. I'm not sure it, it worked. I'm very distracted also. There's a lot happening. <laughs> uh, I, the best part of the episode for me was the close. The close was one of the best, I think. Yeah. It was really great. But as a whole, we haven't we didn't cover any new ground, and we just looked at everybody hates the court, even the judge. It just added a voice. I, I, Keith, I think what I'm saying here is I didn't love it. Okay, all right. I didn't hate it. I didn't love it. I need to trans. You need to transcribe your not loving it, not hating it into an amount of tires. That's what we okay, do. Okay, well that is. I think it was better than mediocre. Uh, I would give it a six, but I need to pump it up a couple because we're going to 11. So I'm going to give it 6.75. 6.75. Okay. Well, I was curious how you were going to react to this episode because all of your complaints, I think, are valid. It is ground that we've covered a fair amount. I think the the just endless discussion of like is our is being a lawyer being a good person is our system all fucked up what's going on blah 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 and that's and yes obviously that is over overdone and i'm usually the one who wants it to tone down 
the Bobby McRambo stuff, and I wanted to sort of stay in the real world. But you loved uh, Bobby I, McRambo this time. What? Well, what I loved about this episode was that we it was self contained. It was one case, start you know start to finish, and that allowed us to spend a little bit more time with the the themes and the ideas. I loved the double long closing. Um, I would loved it, you know yeah. it's just I I find it fascinating and i thought they made good points and i thought at the end of it i wasn't sure where the jury was gonna go i like the swackheim character he's got some good lines it's a great performance uh so i don't think it's a fantastic episode but i've actually as a as a viewer really enjoyed watching this because and you know what it's because the zaniness of it was tied to uh the, the case it was tied mm. to the courtroom. It was tied to it was within the, the bounds of what we're talking about. It wasn't so out of left field, like, you know, serial killer running around. That's not related to the case. So I so I forgave it because it was in the right world. So that is a long way of saying we might be further apart on this episode than we've been on an episode for a while. I'm going to give it eight spare tires. Wow. Yeah, I liked this okay. one. Okay. All right. Well, All right. There you have it. We'll do some math and we'll put that on the website. Keith, where well, roll it and let's tell everybody where they can find us on the interwebs. If you'd like to find us on the interwebs, you can find us on social media at Out of Practice on Facebook and Instagram. You can go to our blog at Out of Practice Podcast at Blogspot. Do us a favor. Leave us a rating and review on Apple Podcasts and you can join the jury. I ran out of things to say. You talk oh, now. Yeah. Yeah, you can also donate to the podcast, help us out in producing the podcast. Clearly, we need the help. <laughs> uh, you can do that by just visiting the show notes and I guess the YouTube notes that I guess I'll have to do now. Uh, uh-huh. I, don't think in- I don't think Instagram lets us do the notes, so we'll see. No. All, all will be revealed. Uh, Look, but, I'll be but, getting the help I need. I have therapy in an hour. We were supposed to start this at two. Yeah, it's been crazy. So it is. <laughs> I'm going to need to talk to my therapist about this very podcast. Well, either way, show notes, donate if you want. And uh, we thank you for joining us. Yeah. And let us These... let us know if you liked uh, seeing us stammer in front of you in video format. It'll only get better. I can't promise that. No. In the will. meantime, have some low cow laser sound. Laser sound.